Hey there, it's Thursday afternoon, the day that I talk marriage. I'm Leslie Dorries, your marriage coach, and I am the owner of Foundations Coaching and the creator of the Hero Husband Project. And today I want to talk to you about something that's really important right now because as um, restrictions are being eased up all over the world, you and your partner may not agree on when it's safe to go out and about and interact with other people. Like any other characteristic, your um, aversion to risk is going to be different. Now, in, I'm going to be a little general here in that women tend to have more aversion to risk than men do. And this is especially true when we're talking about the health of their families. And that's really what we're talking about. And this particular situation is really challenging because there is so much that we do not know. And if you know, so one of you may think, oh, it's okay to go out and about, start hugging people, start, you know, going all over the place and doing things. And the other one may be feeling really not comfortable about that. And there's a tendency to see the other person as being unreasonable. If you're the one who wants to get out and about and move and go around and you know you may think your partner's just being just paranoid and overprotective and overreactive and your partner who may be not at all comfortable in going out and about may just think that you're callous and uncaring. Now if either one of you are having those particular viewpoints you're going to be in trouble. Um, one of the things that I think is really challenging in our world is respecting people who have different experiences, different thoughts, different perceptions. If we could all just be a little bit more respectful and curious about it, we could solve a lot of the world's problems. And believe me, a lot of the fights and arguments in your in, in people's homes would go away. Um, you know, and, 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 and there's and there's more to this. You know, if you guys are under a circumstance where you've been financially impacted by this shutdown, that's going to play a role. And there's all kinds of stuff that's going on here. And it's really, really, really important for you to be able to hear your partner. And I don't mean that, that means you have to agree with them. It means that you need to be able to understand why they feel the way they do. Completely different topic altogether, but it was still one of risk. For years, I would tell my husband, you could have me or you could have a motorcycle, but you couldn't have both because I don't like motorcycles. And he, you know, he kind of let it go, let it go till he, our kids were out of the house and, and so forth. And so he wanted a motorcycle and I backed off and I said, okay, you can have one with all these um, caveats on it, like triple your life insurance and do all this stuff. And uh, I finally was able to make him understand the reason why I didn't like motorcycles was because when I was a little kid, good friends of my parents were in a motorcycle accident. He was killed and she was permanently injured. And I, was, I didn't even remember these people. I couldn't even tell you their names. I just remember the impact on my mom and dad when this happened. And that was, I was probably five, but it stuck with me. And so when I was able to explain that in those words to my husband, he finally understood. He didn't, have, he didn't agree that he was at great risk, but he understood why I felt the way I felt. And this is what we need to do now with our partners. We need to talk to them. We need to listen to them. And my rule of thumb is whoever is the most averse to something. So whether it's the most averse to spending money on something, whether it's the most averse to be, being open to risk for going out and, and being with other people right now, as long as it's not completely unreasonable, meaning we're battening down the hatches, we're not going out for the next six months. But if it's a reasonable position, then go with that person, okay? Because one, when we honor somebody's risk aversion, it makes them feel safer. Now, we can have conversations about um, factual things. 
You know, you can talk about the number of cases. You can talk about the number of cases in your area. Um, you know, and but it's not to convince somebody that they're wrong. It's to try to help them understand the real risk because human beings as a whole do not assess risk very much. There are a lot of people who are afraid of flying but have no trouble getting in their cars and driving. Well, you're at much greater risk of a car accident and dying in a car accident than you are in a plane crash. We don't assess risk very well. And it's very, very hard now because we're getting lots of contradictory information and it's hard to know what to believe. And yes, there are a bunch of different factors at play here. There's the economic factors, there's the personal health factors. We don't know, I mean, the truth of the matter is anybody can catch this illness. Not everybody is gonna get seriously ill, but here's the problem. We know who some of the people who are at greater risk for having a bad reaction are. We don't know all of them, because right now we're now discovering that possibly some children are having some serious, serious reactions. And schools have closed down for the rest of the year in most places, so that decision has been taken away. But some of the other decisions, do we go to church? Do we go to the grocery store? Do we go shopping at the mall? These are all questions that we have to talk about. And the more respectful we are of our partners, one, the more likely they are to listen to our side of it. And the closer we'll feel, because if you're married, guess what? You make decisions together. It's not okay to have one person do a unilateral decision going, this is the way it's going to be. You can do that, but, I rec but I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna cause you problems. Um, your partner will resent it, and rightfully so, and because you're equals. And so being able to have this conversation, being able to have it calmly, and by the way, you may have to have more than one conversation about this. It's, it may not be a one and done. Um, and, and especially if you can provide your partner with some information about what's behind your um, position, they can go away and think about it. Because guess what? We cannot unhear things. So your partner will have heard you and you will have heard your partner. And that's when we can go, hmm, I might not be able to go all this way, but I might be able to go part of the way. And then, and then maybe your partner can move a little bit towards your position because this is a really big decision for a lot of people. There are a lot of moving parts. There's a high cost of, of acting and of not acting. And so this is one of those things where being able to talk to each other is really important. And I'm um, gonna be doing something in the, in the near future to pro I'm going to provide an opportunity for you guys to learn more about how to have these conversations productively and without hurt feelings and argument. Um, probably it'll be next week. So stay on the lookout for that. And hopefully this was helpful. And until next week, stay loving.